up to 50 to 70% of adults report experiencing at least one traumatic event in their lifetime. Studies show that experiencing trauma increases a person's chances of being diagnosed with ADHD. So what came first, the trauma or the ADHD? Let's get into it. Welcome to the What's Eating You podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie, and I'm a psychologist, published author, and public speaker here to educate and validate. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to the What's Eating You podcast. I am so excited to be in your ears, and I am so happy because we have a new podcast editor, and she is amazing. So I hope by the time you're hearing this, we've put the intro and the outro in the episode, so you're not just hearing my dry, old, boring episodes with no music. So I hope that's been loaded. And thank you so much for your contribution as well. I did put the sample intros on my Instagram story. So if you voted, thank you so much. Your vote definitely counted and helped me decide which one to use. That's one thing I really want to implement is getting your opinions and getting your feedback on lots of different things. So a lot of women in the food freedom group. I'm asking for what they want in terms of a retreat and in terms of a food freedom retreat. And also just with other stuff that's coming up, I want to hear from you. I want your input, your suggestions, what content you want. So a massive thank you if you helped produce this because you did. Now, this episode was inspired because I get a lot of questions about trauma or just about the link between trauma and ADHD. So I thought we'd do an episode on it. But before we get into it, let's do our weekly review. Firstly, what are your highlights this week? What was good this week? Take a moment to reflect on this. I definitely think for me, by the time I would have recorded this, I would have met up with my friend in Brisbane, who's actually from Sydney, who I'd met in Bali. And funny story, I actually left a bathing suit at the gym and I didn't have time. You know, on your last day when you're in a foreign country or you're on a holiday and there's just so much to do and you think I'll do it later I'll do it later I didn't have time to go back and pick up my favorite swimwear so my friend who lives in Sydney is in Brisbane has brought the bathers and we're going to meet up and have some dinner at oh highlight of the week as well last week I went to a new restaurant in Brisbane called Ping Pong's and it was amazing I don't know if it's new but it was new for me absolutely incredible. If you are in Brisbane, make sure you go to Ping Pong's. So good. Asian fusion. Love that. Number two, challenges of the week. Hmm. My challenges of the week this week is I think I did have some self-doubt over the weekend or just some self-criticism. I noticed there was part of my brain, not that it was criticizing me, but I kind of always get these thoughts. Oh, you know, if only I knew this in my twenties or you know, at this stage in my life, I should be doing X, Y, Z. And we all get that and it is completely normal. But I can't help but every now and then I feel frustrated with not having known something sooner. And if you relate to this, let me know. Like, for example, I'm reading this business book at the moment and it all makes sense and it's all great. And even part of me thinks back to when I first ever started on social media and Instagram and I was studying to do psychology, I sometimes have these thoughts what if I just went for it in social media? What if I didn't spend a third of my entire life studying? You know, how far could I have gone with it? I love it so much. Did I really need all my degrees? And I appreciate my education so much. And I understand that you can have anything, but you can't have everything at once. And yeah, I value my qualifications and all of that, but I just can't help but imagine if I would have invested my time in business as opposed to, say, becoming a psychologist, what I could have learned and what I could have done on social media. But either way, I'm really proud of where I'm at and where my mind does drift into those self-critical spaces, and this is something you can try as well, is just asking yourself, well, what can you do about it? You can sit here and wallow and say, oh, the past, or you can say, what am I doing about it? And I am doing something about it. I'm creating a life that I love. I have an amazing community. I have you listening to this. And I am. I'm reading business books. I'm going as quickly as I can. I'm trying to learn as quickly as I can. So remember to be kind to yourself and know that we all have these thoughts where we should be in life, what we should be doing in life. Maybe you were successful in the business game, but not in the marriage game. So 
yeah, know that even I have these thoughts as well. It's really common. The key is I pick up on it. I have my little vent sesh. I round it up and I say, right, how are we going to move forward? Oof. Well, that's my little weekly review. What's yours? Let me know. I'd love to hear your challenges, your highlights, or write them down, whatever suits you. Now, this episode is going to untangle ADHD and trauma so you can understand exactly what your story might be because it is unique for everyone. I want to emphasize that if you are going through an ADHD journey or a trauma journey and you just feel like a fly stuck in a web, you are pretty much. What I mean by that is it can be tricky to untangle. You are going on this identity journey. You are going on a self-healing journey for many people. So I want you to know that I'm extremely proud that you are listening to this and you are attempting to figure it out. Let's begin with what is ADHD? Typically present in early childhood, ADHD is a brain-based disorder that is often diagnosed after a child struggles in school or even later in life. We know that a lot of women are getting diagnosed later in life because they weren't that child jumping up and down in the furniture that was hyperactive. A lot of inattentive ADHD in women are the people pleasers, the perfectionists, the ones that stay quiet in the classroom, or they're very compliant. So I'm glad we're realizing that now. ADHD affects your pre frontal cortex. So in the front of your brain, this is the CEO of your brain. It's responsible for memory, processing speed, organizing, planning. And I have so many ADHD episodes on this, so I won't go into too much detail. What is trauma? Now, trauma is a broad term. There's trauma, there's post-traumatic stress disorder. There's so many different, I guess, elements of it. But essentially, trauma refers to a deeply distressing or disturbing experience that can have a lasting impact on an individual's mental, emotional, and physical well-being. It often overwhelms a person's ability to cope, causing feelings of helplessness, diminishing their sense of self, and their ability to feel a full range of emotions and experiences. Now, people think that trauma is the accident. People think that trauma is the natural disaster. These can be traumatic incidences and are traumatic incidences, but the trauma is not the accident. The trauma is how your body and brain responds to a situation. So many people might say to me, but yes, Steph, it's not like I was abused as a child. It's not like I had that trauma happen to me. I was just bullied. But you need to remember, what is traumatic to a 20-year-old? is very different to what is traumatic to a two-year-old. I remember one of my favorite grade two teachers, I won't name and shame in case she's listening to this, which I really don't think that's possible, but she used to play the guitar and we used to sing and it was fun. She's my favorite teacher in grade two. But I remember we did this activity. Remember the hungry caterpillar? And we had to stick the hungry caterpillar onto pieces of paper and what the hungry caterpillar had eaten, da-da-da-da. And I remember that I got it wrong. I got the order wrong or I got the hungry caterpillar, ate apples or ate seven bananas, whatever it was. And I remember she got really angry and she like, I don't know if she ripped the pages of my book, but she got really angry and really frustrated me. And this once beautiful teacher that I loved and trusted, and I just thought she was magical with her singing and her guitar, completely transformed into this critical person. And I still remember that. I still have hungry caterpillar trauma. That's an example of what can be traumatic to a two-year-old, right? I got the hungry caterpillar wrong. Same thing in grade three. I had a teacher that yelled at me because I couldn't tell. I was struggling with telling the time, like analog time. And you know, when you look at a clock and there's the the watch hands and I'm like, one day this isn't even going to matter. I was right, clearly, because Apple watches. But anyways, She kept me in at lunchtime because I couldn't tell the time. And by the way, I don't have ADHD. Imagine someone going through stuff like this on an ongoing basis. I've had two incidences from primary school I can remember that have stuck with me. So imagine how many people with ADHD have these little, these are called small T traumas, which are the little buildup of things. So the big T trauma is your abuse, your neglect, that type of thing. But then small T traumas are those buildups. 
back to the time. So she kept me in a lunchtime. I was struggling to tell the time and she punished me instead of trying to help me. I don't know if she thought I was being naughty. I don't know if she thought I was just trying to be smart, but I, I didn't know. And to this day, I make it a joke, but I struggle to tell the time. I know the little hand, I know the big, big hand, but, and I count in fives, but it's not something that comes to me quickly and, and easily. And I think it's my grade three clock trauma. So this is what I mean. You might think as a woman in her thirties, oh, but you know what I went through, I thought wasn't that bad. A teacher just yelled at me. It's coded differently. Okay. Trauma is a biological response. It's your nervous system getting activated. And when your nervous system gets activated, so when these teachers yelled at me, I went into fight or flight, my nervous system is activated. It gets coded in your brain as important. And then what happens is, if that's a traumatic incident, when I have situations as an adult that reminds me of the feelings that those childhood traumas brought up in me, like maybe being told I'm wrong, feeling like I'm not smart enough or I'm not good enough or no one cares, whatever it is, then I'm going to feel the same way. So if you feel a feeling or you have situations that evoke a feeling and you can trace back to a childhood memory that has that same feeling, that is an encoded trauma response. But as always, speak to a licensed professional. Anyways, that was a massive segue I wasn't planning on doing. So let's get into the crux. ADHD may cause trauma and vice versa. Now, people will always argue with me on my TikToks and say, eh, I thought you were born with ADHD. Yes, essentially you are born with it, but the research is always coming out. It's always being updated. But even if you're born with ADHD, it has to develop at some point, okay? It has to develop at some point. Your brain is developing in the womb. You are going through this whole process. So trauma, people don't realize, can be in vitro. It can be in the womb. And I'm going to talk about some examples of pre-birth trauma. So if you're listening to this and you think you have ADHD or you have ADHD or you have trauma, do you know anything about your mother's pregnancy journey? Do you know anything about your mother before you were born? And I really want to sit down one day and interview my mum and just ask her questions because back in their day, things were so different. Their living conditions, the way their parents treated them, access to food, access to money, financial stress, etc etc that's why the next generation or your generation may be dealing with the unresolved trauma of your elders your ancestors your grandparents so pre-birth trauma this is also known as prenatal or antenatal trauma is a traumatic experience that occurs before birth there are some really good books on this there is it didn't start with you. I think epigenetics may cover it as well. But this can be due to various factors, such as your mother's stress levels, substance abuse. Did she drink? Did she smoke? Did she live under a power line? Did she have access to heavy metals? Did she have access to mold? Malnutrition, exposure to violence, complications during pregnancy, umbilical cord, all that sort of stuff can contribute to it. An example is if a pregnant woman experiences a car accident, the shock and stress could potentially impact the unborn child, and this may be considered pre-birth trauma. Similarly, if a mother is under severe stress or exposed to harmful substances during pregnancy, it could lead to pre-birth trauma for a child. So when you all have a goal, I mean, not all of you, you're all amazing, just a couple of the TikTok trolls, and say, eh, you're born with it. Yes, but something needs to predispose you to be vulnerable to developing it. Now, there's a lot more research coming out. Can it develop? Da, 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 da. I definitely think it can, but I don't think it develops in adulthood. It definitely starts in childhood, but you don't pick up on it until adulthood. That's my thought around it. Childhood trauma. Now, what's the difference of childhood trauma? So we did pre-birth. Let's talk about your childhood. So when a child experiences abuse, attachment issues, maybe their needs are not met, their need for love, affection, safety, security, this affects their brain development. This is why it's called neurodiverse versus neurotypical. 
The name for those two terms comes because the brain hasn't typically developed the way we would expect. Now, there's so many strengths of ADHD, which I can go into in another episode, but that's how the word diverse was developed, right? The brain didn't develop in the typical way based on what's going on. And brain scans will show this. There's a fantastic psychiatrist that talks about brain health and he does all these brain scans and there are differences in the brains of people with ADHD. Now, studies have found that people who have experienced emotional abuse or neglect are more likely to have ADHD. They've also found that there is a 2.5 increase in the prevalence of fractures in children with ADHD. And this is something I have heard and seen both anecdotally from people I've worked with, that as a child, they were way more accident prone. They experienced way more broken bones, fractures, infections, illnesses, autoimmune conditions. And they also found that sexual abuse and physical neglect was more reported in females with ADHD. Now, just remember, take these statistics with a grain of salt. Usually, especially when it comes to female statistics, it usually is because females are more likely to report it, whereas men may not report sexual or physical abuse due to gender stereotypes. Now, what about undiagnosed ADHD? People with ADHD are often bullied. They feel they don't fit in. They think there's something wrong with them. They struggle academically and socially in school. And often they are admonished by adults for behaviors over which they have little control. So undiagnosed ADHD can be traumatic. Now, why does this result in trauma? What you need to know is when you're a child going through adverse life experiences, and remember what's traumatic for a two-year-old is very different to what you think is traumatic as a 20-year-old. The body's chronic stress response, we know it as fight or flight. This is the sympathetic arousal right? It's an activation of the sympathetic nervous system. So when you feel anxious, when you feel stressed, when you feel alert, your sympathetic nervous system is activated. It's your on switch. Now, this is the body's involuntary response to danger, and it causes a rise in your stress hormones, adrenaline, and cortisol. This rushes through your body. So this is why your heart may increase, the beating may get faster, your muscles become tense, you might feel shaky, your legs might feel like jelly. And this happens when you perceive a danger or threat. Now, as a child, if this happens repeatedly, okay, so individuals with ADHD, often as a child, they're navigating daily disappointments, admonishments, blows to their self-esteem. Why can't you do this? Come on, we're going to be late. Put your shoes on. Why are you so slow? If only you applied yourself. These messages get encoded. The body learns to treat everything it encounters as a dangerous threat. And you know what happens? Over time, it creates fixed action patterns in the body's tissue, such as habitual muscle tension, clenching jaw, raising your shoulders, teeth grinding, digestive issues, and neurons that fire the same way repeatedly, such as being defensive or having defensive behavior patterns, they get wired, okay? All of these are signs of dysregulation. Your nervous system has learned to respond to past events as if they are happening in the present. So just remember, something traumatic happens as a kid or something that your nervous system perceives as a threat or danger that gets encoded in your brain And then any present situations which are reminiscent of what you experienced as a child is what triggers you. We all know about triggers. So our nervous system has learned to respond to past events as if they are happening in the present. So trauma is essentially feeling distress in the present for something that has happened in the past or if a present moment is bringing up those feelings that happened back then. Think of your nervous system as your body's version of a building's electrical wiring. Your brain is the fuse box and all your nerves are all the wires that extend throughout the body. Now, our wires contain billions of neurons that communicate through our neurotransmitters in the brain and it's like electricity. We jump from one neuron to the next. In people with ADHD and trauma, the wiring gets all crossed and dysregulated. The neural functioning becomes altered. And this causes your wiring to fire differently. So this begs the question, what caused the impaired neurological functioning? 
ADHD and trauma are very interrelated and we might not be able to tease them apart. So it's important that we address both. Before I get into that, many people say, but how do I know if I have trauma? Well, usually if you have a memory, feeling or thought that you've always had and you don't know why you have it, this can tell us that it's stored differently. Because when you're little and you don't have the vocabulary to express what's going on, so many people say to me, why can't I remember stuff? Or I don't know if this traumatic situation happened to me, but I I feel something. When you're little, you don't have the vocabulary, but you still have the feeling. So if you think I've always felt this way, it's usually a feeling around a trauma root, right? So people know they have reoccurring patterns they're not happy about. I lash out at people, my behavior is dysregulated, risk-taking, and these patterns might be around themes. It's when something's happened I'm not happy about, it's when I don't feel seen, it's when I don't feel heard, it's when I feel dread. So sometimes you won't remember the memory, but you can recall the feeling. So how do we untangle this web of trauma and ADHD? Now, they work together, essentially, and I'm going to do a part two on things you can do to help you with this and process it. But essentially, we need to treat them together, but we can prioritize one at a time because the untreated condition can mask any significant progress of the other. So, for example, people with ADHD and trauma, they both need strategies for executive functioning. So if we start with ADHD, ADHD has three pillars. Pillars of treatment include medication, executive functioning strategies, which is your organization, your planning, your electrical diaries, all of that, and then psychological therapy. And psychological therapy is to address the trauma part or anything psychological, low self-esteem, body image issues, eating disorders, etc. So you need executive functioning, but in order to regulate the nervous system, you must also process the trauma. ADHD medication is a great place to start, but always speak to your individual psychiatrist. It's got a lot of research for both conditions. Now, the reason that meds are so useful is because it can help you feel that life is more manageable. And when life is more manageable, therapy can be more effective. And this is where your real healing can begin. So for example, stimulant medication improves your focus And behavioral treatment can help you regulate the nervous system rather than managing the disorganization. So for example, if your ADHD meds are helping you feel more organized and in control, then you can engage better in the other things you're trying to work on, which might be regulating your emotions. What does this all mean? It means that the exact cause of ADHD is still quote unquote unknown, but there are risk factors which can make it more likely to develop trauma isn't what happened to you it's how your brain responded to it and encoded it there is a high likelihood that if you have ADHD you may have had instances which were encoded as traumatic as a child and this doesn't have to be abuse neglect abandonment this can be being yelled at by a teacher being told you ain't good enough which can then get encoded in your brain as people don't care about me or they think I'm not smart and Having undiagnosed ADHD is traumatic in many ways. So make sure that you validate yourself during the journey. In part two, I'm going to teach you strategies on how to start to work with trauma and ADHD instead of working against it. So make sure you click follow on this podcast, wherever you're listening from, Apple or Spotify, so you do not miss the next episode. If you enjoyed this, let me know. Have the best weekend and I'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I am truly grateful for you being here. If you got something out of today's show, please take a moment to leave a rating or review. To access more resources or support, check out the show notes below. See you next time.